Good morning, everybody. We're about to get out there on the road. We're in Clearwater, Minnesota, headed west towards North Dakota. When we get there, we're gonna turn north and point our nose up towards Canada, up I-29. We're gonna shoot ourselves up there as fast as we can because we're going home today. We gotta make one stop officially. We have to grab some fuel and Grand Forks. Other than that, let's get going. Before we get going, I just want to remind you guys of my good friends over at Beaver Bitcoin. I would never promote anything to you that I don't actually use myself. It's a great website. They make it super easy to buy Bitcoin for Canadians. You can buy with e-transfer or with bank transfer, whatever. It's like any other exchange except there's only Bitcoin. They transfer directly to your own personal wallet too, so they don't hold it on their site or anything, which I like, because most exchanges that I go to, you gotta first fund your wallet or fund fund your portfolio, and then you gotta buy Bitcoin, and then, you, then you gotta move your Bitcoin into your wallet to get it off their site. This makes it so much easier, and it's something that I use myself too. I read all the comments below the last time that I talked about these guys, and I, I really think that Bitcoin is one of the most misunderstood concepts of our time. So I would encourage you guys, if you want to learn more, beaverbitcoin.com slash learn. You can go and learn more about what it is there. Or if you just want to check out the site and you're a Canadian, you already have a Bitcoin wallet and you want to start stacking it to save, beaverbitcoin.com slash truckerjosh. They make it super easy for you. I use it. But anyways, we need to get out there on the road. Guys, and please remember, I'm not a financial advisor, okay? I'm not here to give you financial advice. I would highly encourage you if you guys are completely new to it or if you don't understand it fully. I can tell by some of the comments that came in last time people aren't quite understanding what it is. I'm not uh, really a Bitcoin guy, I'm a trucker guy. There are tons of resources for you to go and learn more about it. But I would say don't do anything you're not comfortable with. Know the game before you get in the game, right? But. For myself, yes, I I do hold it. Very volatile, it goes up and down. But the long-term trend is up. Like today when I'm filming this, Bitcoin is trading at over $91,000 Canadian. We're at an all-time high right now. So keep in mind with all-time highs, Sometimes they level out, sometimes they go down, sometimes they smash through the roof and go way up there. And there are a whole host of scammers out there who use Bitcoin as a vehicle to scam people. So you have to be internet smart. Only go to trusted sources. And know what you're doing.
from their shelf to in the delivery truck to the delivery center. Probably taken off that truck, put on a different truck or a plane. Shipped out somewhere close to you to another distribution center, put onto a different truck, brought somewhere else, then put into another little van that brings it right to your doorstep at your house. All in like one to three days. That's incredible. Before when I had stopped, I had uh, opened up one of these uh, fruit uh, fruit bowls or whatever, right? And it's got water in there and I spilt it all over my crotch. So it looked like I peed my pants. So I was uh, hoping it would dry by the time I got here. So I'd get out of the truck and not look like, uh, oh, let's be honest, I would have changed my pants then. But uh, I'm just gonna do it with my belt. Still losing weight. Still feeling good. Feels good to actually make some progress, finally. <laughs> oh yeah, let's get out there. I don't want to waste any time. I want to go home. Hundred and sixty-five gallons. What do you guys think of these Kenworth trucks here? What is this, the nine ninety? I don't mind it. Uh, it's just, it's definitely not a W900. I don't plan on 
ever having a new truck, I do plan on keeping this truck forever. I don't want a new one. I just keep rebuilding this one. It's cheaper to rebuild a truck than it is to buy a brand new truck. Way cheaper. You can rebuild it from the ground up for half the price of these new trucks. And it's got less than half the problems. But we'll see where life takes us. Right now, life is taking us 123 kilometers in this direction. Thankfully driving away from the sunset. Don't have the sun in my eyes. So I've got uh, a short amount of time to get home. I'm trying to get home in time to have supper, but I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> I'm going to have supper, but it's going to be a little late, I think. I'm home now. Uh, it's a Friday when I'm filming this. So I'm just getting home. Our Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we have a doctor's appointment. Check it out. I finally got them. My new tarps. Brand new. I'm gonna use them on our next trip. I'm gonna keep these tarps just for my first trip, just to make sure, because I haven't taken them out of the bag yet, right? So now I've ordered three tarps, two end tarps with eight foot flaps, eight foot sides, eight foot drops. They're blue, obviously. They're 24 feet wide by 18 feet long. Right, 24 or 25 feet? 25 by 18. Anyways, eight foot drops and they're 18 foot long. I got a center tarp and an end tarp, so it covers up to 54 feet. And my trailer is only 53 feet long. Same thing as these, just new and not holy. These are more patched than tarp. So I'm not really excited about carting around six tarps on my next trip, but I don't have the time to pull them out and get them all checked out and everything. I'm gonna do that when I get to the tarp shed. I'm gonna pull them out and put them over the truck then. So just in case, just in case, I'm going to take those along. Cause I know those are good. I know those will fit, even though they are more patched than tarp. And it's just for one trip. So I got the, I'm getting the truck serviced this weekend. And we're also gonna talk about getting this frame done. I know it's very dirty right now. It's that season. Please don't judge me. Judge the climate I'm in. It is crazy out here. So the frame rails, what we're gonna do, is we're gonna pull everything off of them. No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna pay a professional to do it. Let's be honest. I'm not gonna tackle this project because I want it done right. And I want it to last another 15 years. This frame here is 15 years old. It's still holding out fine, but it's lost all the paint from the cab back pretty much. So it needs to be completely redone. So what they do is they take off every single bolt. They take every single thing off here. Take the wheels off, take that off, suspension off. Or did they take the suspension off? Yes, yes, I told them to take everything off. They take the fifth wheel plate, everything on here, they take it off. They go right off of there. They, take everything. they leave the cab on, I believe. I don't think they're gonna take the whole cab off, but I'll leave that up to them and their judgment. Take the fuel tanks off, take the steps off. So that all of the frame rail is bare. And what they do is they sandblast the entire thing. Take everything out of here, sandblast the entire thing. If it needs to be reinforced anywhere, you can reinforce it. At the same time, I'm going to be stretching it out approximately about 24 inches. Uh, the maximum wheelbase length in Canada is 7.2 meters, or that's about 284 inches from center of the front axle, the center of the rear axles here. Right now this truck is sitting at 244 inches. That used to be the maximum allowable length in Canada. Now the maximum length has extended, but the overall length of your unit has stayed the same. You can only be 75 and a half feet long from front of your bumper to the rear of the trailer bumper. So I have to make sure that I'm careful and then I measure everything out so that I don't go over length because then I'm gonna need special permits everywhere I go in Canada. The US, they don't care. You wanna pull a semi-trailer with a bus, 
In the US, they don't care. In Canada here, we have to stay within certain, certain length limits. So I am able to put another about 40 inches on this frame if I want to. If I were able to stay within, I'd probably have to pull a full 48 foot trailer then all the time and have my fifth wheel all the way forward. So we're not gonna go that far forward. I'm probably just gonna do about 24 to 30 inches, something like that. I have to measure everything out to make sure that I'm good. But other than that, uh, the reason we're doing that is you see how full this frame is here? It's the same thing on the other side. I wanna put an auxiliary power unit on here to keep the truck warm in winter and cool in summer. Mostly cool for summer, because I already have an S-bar heater that I rebuilt to uh, keep it warm in winter time. But it keeps the cab cool, it also keeps my batteries charged, and it keeps my engine warm. Even though I have another heater for my engine. But I want an APU on here. What that does is it reduces my idle time. And thereby, if you s speak the language of environmentalists, less exhaust out the pipes. Better for climate. Better for environment. So however which way you look at it, saving money. That's my, that's my main, in my head, my main thought. Don't idle that truck. Don't wear it out. I want a power unit. I'm going to put it on on this side here. That's why I need about 24 inches. It's going to be from here to there. I'm going to slap it on the frame right there. And then on the other side, on the driver's side over here, I'm going to put a couple of uh, tire chain holders or tire chain rack right here so that my tire chains are visible and hanging here where DOT can see them. That way when I pull into a scale in a zone that requires chains at a certain time of year or requires chains to be on the truck and with me, I can show them it's right there. They can see it with their own eyes. Less chance that they're going to pull me into double check if I have my chains. They can see them, right? Right now my chains are in this box. Down there. Not very visible if you, if you ask me. It's hard to see them. So, I mean, if, if they want to check to make sure I have chains, they've got to pull me in. And you know what happens when DOT pulls you in at the scale to check if you have chains? And they're going to check everything else. They're going to check absolutely everything. Fine tooth comb, top to bottom. Not that I'm afraid of that. I'm confident that I keep my truck up to regulation and, and safe. But I, it, you know how it is. It's a, with an officer like combing over your truck what if you miss something what if you're like just sitting there in anxiety and what if he does find something and what if he's lying <laughs> i just don't want to do it i want to avoid talking with them you know when they're off duty they want to invite me down for a barbecue I'll, I'll have a great barbecue with them and eat a nice big juicy steak but when they're on duty and in uniform hey no offense i'd rather not talk to them it's, that uniform is not exactly my friend though i know that they're doing good things they're keeping bad drivers off the road so you got to give them that they they are necessary i'm not saying they're not necessary it's, you get what i mean i just rather not talk to them when they're working i don't want them going over my truck it's just a waste of time that's my biggest thing it's a waste of time i'm always in a rush as you know always in a rush you get pulled in for an inspection well pfft, there goes your whole day your logbook keeps clicking while they're out here sniffing around. You don't get that time back. You have to log it as on duty. And then you might be late for your delivery or for your pickup. You might miss your pickup and miss out on a load and lose that revenue. Or you might be late delivering and then you have an unhappy customer who won't want you to haul their stuff again because you were late and then you lose out on that future revenue. And it messes up the whole timeline. That's enough. You guys know what I mean. I'm, I'm half joking around here and half being serious. We all don't want to be pulled into the scale for uh, anything. So I want my chains visible here so that when I drive over the scale, they can see them right there. That they're not going to use that as an excuse to pull me in to check to see if I have chains and then go for a whole level one inspection. No, oh, I got my chains right there. Let me go. Got things to do. People to see. Places to go. Got loads to deliver. But anyways, that's enough yapping to me. I'm just yapping around here yapping around <laughs> i'm just yapping about is that even a, i just made that up so thanks everybody for hanging out with me hanging out with old blue we both appreciate it i'll see you in my next video we're gonna have a couple days off at home here so i'll see you in a couple days hope you take care don't forget to subscribe hit that bell so you don't miss when my next video does go live 
And if you want to go to the next step, you can click that Join Now button below the video and see how you can support the channel further. Best thing you can do, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. See you later.